Hey guys, I'll be discussing Piaget's sensory motor intelligence, which is considered period one. Period one consists of six substages that Piaget uses to explain infants' way of trying to discover a new world. This period consists of birth to age two. Infants will rely on their natural inborn reflexes to make sense of the world, such as looking, grasping, or sucking. Throughout this presentation, I will be discussing some of the ways that infants will utilize what they already know to make sense of the new environment in which they live in. The first substage is reflexes. This stage, children will generally use their inborn reflexes to navigate through the world they live in, such as grasping or looking. Piaget explains that children will cultivate what they call schemes or schemas that are action patterns used in their everyday environment to create new skills. Piaget also believes that reflexes such as sucking is one of the most important reflexes. Reflexes have a certain passivity about them. It is believed that organisms lie inactive until something stimulates them, such as sucking or grasping. Stage two, primary circular reaction. A primary circular reaction is generally when a baby encounters a new experience and then he or she will try to repeat it. Piaget used the illustration of a baby sucking his thumb. Generally what happens, an infant will move his hand around its face until it finds its mouth. Once the baby finds its mouth, it will generally consider it as a pleasurable encounter and they will continually repeat this action until they've mastered it. Primary circular reactions involve the organization of two previous separate body movements or schemes. Circular reactions are a good illustration for what Piaget meant by intellectual development as a construction process. Babies will put together different schemes and patterns to make this happen. In Piaget's third stage of secondary circular reactions, the child becomes more influenced by the world in which they live in. They are very driven and they will intentionally create situations that trigger response in their environment. Piaget often referred to this stage as making sights last. He believes that children are aware of their power, and once they become aware of this, they love to make things happen over and over again. Stage four, the coordination of secondary schemes. In this stage, infants are able to utilize a single task to get a result. Their steps and skills become differentiated. In this stage, they are able to use schemes from previous stages to create a single outcome. Since we are unable to communicate with children at this age, we are able to observe their different actions and movements to figure out their development. Piaget's fifth sensory motor stage is referred to as tissue circular reaction. In this stage, infants will experiment with different actions to observe different outcomes. The book illustrated um, a child placing his hand under the faucet and observing the water spraying at them when they put their hand under the water. Um, when a child moves his hand and places it under there again, he refers to that as stage three, making sights last. Infants are into creating new things and observing new things through their actions. Um, he wanted to note that this stage was used for independent use. Um, the child is very independent from the adult and they're able to make their own observations and analyze them from there. In Piaget's sixth and final stage of the sensory motor process, the beginnings of thought, Children are actually able to think about what they're going to do internally before they act. It is important to note that in the sixth stage, 
Children have something to what Piaget refers to as deferred imitation. Children are able to imitate things that have been done and model them up to hours and days after they've observed it. Alongside the sensory motor stages, Piaget also wanted to review the concept of time and space. He referred to this as object permanence. Object permanence is referred to as the child's ability to understand that objects continue to exist even though they may not see them nor can they hear them. Theoretical issues, the stage concepts. Most psychologists use the term stages very loosely when they're describing or summarizing the findings of their research. However, this isn't true for Piaget. Kevlar stressed that Piaget's stage concepts implies a strong position on natural development. Piaget advanced a rigorous stage theory, which means he believed his theories, one, unfold in an unvariant sequence, two, describe qualitatively different patterns, three, refer to general properties of thought, four, represent hierarchic integration, and five, his theories are culturally universal. Piaget's movement from stage to stage is often criticized. As we can see, Piaget adopted many theoretical viewpoints when he was constructing the cognitive development theory. You may mistake Piaget as a learning theorist or a behavioral theorist. Piaget devoted a great deal of time to the structure of his stages, but he did not leave room to analyze the problem with movement throughout the stages. Piaget acknowledged that biological maturation plays a prominent role in a child's development. However, maturation alone cannot be the sole factor. Piaget believes that an individual's environment has a great deal of substance when considering their development. Piaget believed that a child's intellectual stimulation is reliant upon their environment. Now here's where things can get a little tricky. Piaget does believe that the environment offers stimulation, but that is only partially so. Piaget believed that the environment is there to stimulate, nurture, and challenge the child, but it is the child themselves that build cognitive structures. Children seek out the environment. They capture events that spark their interests. Children are particularly intrigued by events that don't necessarily respond to their past experiences. Children will take events or different experiences and they will use those to build on them and they will make new experiences and new ways of dealing with the world that they now live in. So in this sense, it isn't the environment alone that structures the child's mind, but it's the child's ability to incorporate new schemes. Experiences that promote cognitive development, in addition, not only take place through interesting events, but they also happen in a state of conflict. For example, an infant may be unable to grasp an object because an obstacle stands in the way. At this point, the child will therefore need to invent a new structure to obtain the object. The child assimilates new objects by making accommodations to build on new constructive structures. It is very important to emphasize that development is just a spontaneous process. It is actually the child himself who is able to assimilate new information, resolve contradiction, and is also able to construct new cognitive structures to implement into the world in which they now live in.